Hello everyone, my name is Amanda Markwick and I'm here today to talk a little bit about the Renaissance flute. So this is the flute that was used all over Europe from about the 15th century to the 17th century. And as you can see, it has quite a minimal design. It's just a slender piece of wood with a cylindrical bore inside, a mouth hole obviously, and six holes drilled in for the fingers. Now there's no key on the Renaissance flute, unlike later flutes, and so that limits the tonalities that this Renaissance flute can play in, but it matches perfectly with the modes that were used in Renaissance music. There's a very appealing rawness and directness in the sound of the Renaissance flute. You can hear a bit of wood and air present in the tone. And this instrument responds very directly and immediately to any movement in the flutist's body or even to the emotions of the player. This is very much like the human voice reflects the mood or the health of the speaker. The color palette of the Renaissance flute is also very broad. Sometimes it does sound like singing. Sometimes it can sound like you're playing a cornetto instead. And at other times, it simply sounds like the flute that it is. So it is clear from 16th century music instruction books that this flute was conceived of as a consort instrument. And by that, I simply mean a family of flutes. We also have families of other instruments. We know of the viol consort and also of the recorder consort. These are quite familiar today. So in the flute family, we have a bass flute pitched in G, a tenor flute pitched in D, and the descant or soprano flute pitched in A. And these are all one-fifth apart, just like the recorder consort. The tenor flute is the one I will focus on today. Now while it's called a tenor flute, it can actually play tenor, alto, and soprano parts, and this is because it has a range of two and a half octaves, which makes it very versatile. was presented in music instruction books as a consort instrument. There are, of course, many written descriptions and iconographical sources showing the flute in mixed ensembles. Flute and lute is a popular combination, as is flute, lute, and voice. There are also many unusual combinations, such as one of my favorites, flute and trombone and dulcian, which is a kind of early bassoon. And it's really fun and interesting to play in these combinations of instruments and try out the different color possibilities. But what repertoire would 16th century flutists have played? By far the biggest majority would have been vocal music, and that could range from a simple folk melody all the way through to very complex polyphony by composers such as Josquin. One of the first sources to actually name these flutes is actually still a collection of vocal music. Published by Pierre Attignon in 1533, this collection has 28 chansons, and next to each title, he writes a small letter A or B or AB combination. And in the introduction, he tells us for the pieces with the letter A next to them, these would work well on the Renaissance flute consort. 
And for those pieces with a B next to them, they work well on a recorder consort. And for those with AB, they work well on either consort. With the Renaissance flute, there is no part of the instrument that comes between the intention and expression of the player and the flow of air. It actually does feel very much like singing, and with the quick response of the instrument to dynamics and to the articulation of the player, we are practically able to speak words with our flutes. And so the flutist does feel very much at home in vocal repertoire. for instrumentalists at this time to take a vocal melody and play around with it a bit by adding embellishments. So the most popular practice was to create diminutions or divisions, which were created simply by slowing the original melody down considerably and then filling up all the space in between the notes of the original melody with many notes of a much smaller value. So things like florid scalar passages, or trills, or turns, or a combination of all of these. So there are eight 16th century vocal and instrumental sources that present several pages of diminutions on every interval, from a second going all the way through an octave, and even going through the cadences as well. instrumental music developed throughout the 16th century, but the music was not instrument specific, aside for pieces of course for keyboard or written in lute tablature. So it is only at the end of the century that we see pieces assigned to these flutes by name. And still then, they feel more like suggestions. You often see things like, this piece would work well for a flute or a recorder or a cornetto. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this short introduction to the Renaissance flute.